Okay, so I'm going to uh, just pull up a couple things. By the way, uh, I believe it was in your last email. The last video link in the group of resources to view was one by uh, uh, Brian Simmons, uh, hosted by Liz Wright, and uh, it was entitled Entering the Throne Room. And if, if you watched it, uh, you will probably were blessed by it. If not, I think you should watch it. And I want to just pull up a few quotes. All right. So uh, they inspired me as I was listening. I was driving back from Minnesota. And uh, these quotes stuck out at me. First of all, Brian Simmons says he has an angel named Mark. <laughs> I thought, what? <laughs> Okay, I'm going to go with that. <laughs> and that one was just for fun. But then he just speaks of, and what I want to kind of draw our attention to is how the rhetoric, the narrative, the vocabulary of the speakers of the gospel, the heralders, the narrative is changing. The vocabulary is changing. Look at this. Whole groups will be caught up to the throne. Well, we know that's biblical. That's that's Hebrews 12:22. For you have come to Mount Zion. Yeah. So, we know it's biblical, but when do we hear from the pulpit people begin using that vernacular, that that uh, vocabulary? And what's happening is the Lord is awakening it in some so that they plant the seeds through their narrative through their speaking. They plant the seeds, and those seeds are just germinating here, there, and elsewhere until eventually, as whole groups get caught up to the throne. I, I believe this with all of my heart, and I do believe that it is not very far in the future. It is not just biblical, which, by the way, that's what Moses experienced with the 72 elders. The 70 elders, they got, uh, they went up to the mountain and they had the first uh, corporate ascension with God. They ate a meal with God on the mountain. Amazing, amazing. So not only is it biblical, but back in the middle 1900s, we had a group called the Ladies of the Golden Candlestick who would all get caught up together and a number of crazy cool things. Here's another word that just inspired me. It's like I said, it's it's words that I've never heard this before. I've never heard this word, but when you hear it, you say, "Oh, somebody's got a hold of something. Somebody heard a rhema. Somebody has seen a picture, and from that picture, they're speaking words that are not part of our common English language, like the daybreakers. The daybreakers." Guys and gals, that's who you and I are. We're daybreakers. We're causing the day to be broken out over the earth. And you say, well, how can you do that? Well, the scripture says we can hasten the coming, uh, we can hasten the appearing of the Lord. Hastening the appearing of the Lord. Well, so I'm, I'm sure that's going to take a lot of different manifestations, a lot of different dimensions, how that works and how we hasten it. That's in the internal part of us. It's also through through how we speak and how we seed the hearts of men and women around us. How about this one? The dawn makers. Oh, I'm telling you, I just sit there on a, for a moment on those words. They resonate so deeply in me. Maybe because that's what I believe my commission is. But if you're a part of this group, I think you're part of that same commission <laughs> to be daybreakers and dawn makers. Now, those were spoken by Brian Simmons, but Liz uh, Wright had this uh, quote. She says, there will be things happen so, I don't know whether she used the word stupendous, but I like using that word. She says that unbelief will become inconceivable. 
it'll just wipe out unbelief. Like you just can't unbelieve. You cannot have unbelief. It's just in your face. Too, too bold, too black and white, too big. You just can't have unbelief. Do those phrases stir you like they do me? It's again, it's like the Lord is seeding the soil of our hearts, soil of our minds. He says, I, I want to put that in and I'm planting it kind of like a hook in a fish's mouth. And so that, well, you may not get caught right yet, but you're caught nonetheless. <laughs> you're not getting off of that. That seed is going to germinate and it's going to spring up to oaks of righteousness. So I'm going to throw out a few uh, more concepts and quotes here. This is the Patricia King quote. Some of what the Lord's about to do will shock and awe many people. It manifests in his coming days. Of never, things he does will never have been done before. Things will stretch your imagination and challenge your intellect. Fiorella Giordano. Those who are scholars of God's wonders become practitioners of wonder. Oh, oh, oh that stirs me so deep. So, do I want to be a practitioner of wonder? Then become a scholar. Go to school. Go to college on the wonders of God. Both the scriptural ones and the ones that have happened in modern history and the ones that are happening around us right now. Journal them. Eat them. Feast on them. Chew on them. Uh, 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 meditate on them. Uh, another quote she has, uh, she speaks about being wonder-driven and asks the question, are you solution-driven? That sounds kind of mental. Innovation-driven, that's, that's kind of good. Maybe creative kind of thing going but how about wonder-driven? Just be compelled, fueled, empowered by wonders. Be a scholar of it. I'm just, this is a little popori right now. So look at Chris Blackaby. See what you think of this one. I have never met anyone more righteous than me. Can you say that? Is that blasphemy? Is that pride and arrogance? Or is that just agreeing with God? Think of it. Think of it. The Bible says, And Jesus imputed to you righteousness. You are now the righteousness of God in Christ. Have you let that sink into you? Have you let that permeate you? Have you let that infect you? You've got a total being disease now, <laughs> best kind of disease. <laughs> you see yourself as righteous. Remember that thing we talked about earlier of affirming the part of us that is doing well and just calling forth the gold, yes, I am righteous. There is nobody more righteous than me. <laughs> now, you might want to be careful who you say that to. That could be a knee jerk, uh, have a knee jerk reaction for some. So uh, you might want to just coach your heart for a while. <laughs> oh, here's one. This is my quote. You've seen it in most of my emails for the last month or two. I believe that it's well within our revelation and faith that some of us here could be and will be the first fruits of transfiguration, physical transportation, and levitation or physical ascension this year. I, you know, I, I do put a little caveat. I'm kind of just, you know, maybe I should be more assertive. So I'm not saying that I'm prophesying this, but I believe this is really possible. I believe this is doable. I really do believe it is within our revelation and faith. I really do. This is, it's solidly scriptural. 
We've been studying it. We've been reaching into it. We've been act, uh, doing activations all along these areas. I do believe it could happen among us. Here's an anonymous quote. The best way to predict the future is to create it. What do you say? We just take these quotes and just go ahead and walk in them. It's going to take a, a transitioning from being hearers of the word to becoming doers of the word. In other words, thank you, God. I agree with that. My mind says yes. I assent to it. I say it's it's doable, it's it's possible. But then we've got to put the rubber to the road. And that takes another, a completely different part of our being. It's not just our mind now. It's not just grunting. It's the activating, in my world, it's the activating of my spirit and soul together in unison and in harmony. And then I begin leaning into it with not only that activation, but then uh, applying or adding faith to it. Now, I'm not there yet, but you and I, you and I have all tasted of some of the first fruits. We've all had spiritual heavenly experiences in the last few years that we've never had before. How did you do that? Well, we begin activating. We begin taking it out of just mental knowledge and data, and we begin putting it into uh, actual uh, activity or activation. Uh, just a couple things here. I don't know. Let's go to Ephesians 5, 8. For you were once darkness, but now you are light. So walk as children of light. This kind of falls into the same line of, there's nobody more righteous than me. <laughs> Oh, that sounds so, that sounds so dangerous, doesn't it? <laughs> but can we say also that I am light? Now, walk as a child of light. Walk as the children of light. It takes some doing to coach our mind and make it go over, as they say in engine, combustion engine world, over top dead center over into the other side where things begin to flow together by default. 